welcome, welcome to A Cup of Soul. And I am Teresa, and I am Girl Talk, where real talk. Girl Talk exists to ignite the passion in the heart of women for an authentic uh, fellowship, engage in discipleship, and intentionality in living out the love of Christ all over the world. And today I miss Candace because this is Candace's line where she normally opens us up. So today is Teresa opening us up. So today, come on over, enjoy this journey as we talk about the golden years. Welcome, welcome, welcome to A Cup of Soul. And I am so glad to be here today because guess what? Candace is not here with us and missing her. She is doing family things tonight. She's, she's actually hanging out in Vegas with cheer. And um, they'll be heading back tonight. So I get to record tonight. But I have invited some special guests to join me tonight here on Cup of Soul. And I am going to introduce them, and we're going to jump in and have some fun, laughter. You might want to grab some paper to take down some notes, because wisdom, as Candace always says, wisdom is dropped, and the wisdom that's going to be dropped is for you and you and you and you. And not only that wisdom, but we're going to fill your cup up. So get ready, because I got some awesome guests that will be joining me today to drop some wisdom. So grab a pen and paper, and here we go. Before we get started, I am going to ask one of my special guests to pray us in, and then I'll introduce her after she prays us in. Señor, te damos gracias, Padre, por este día. Te agradecemos, Padre, porque estamos aquí presente delante de tu presencia en esta plataforma, Señor que tú nos has puesto, Señor. Gracias, Padre Dios Todopoderoso, por este día, por la bendición que vamos a cumplir ahora en esta misión que estamos haciendo, Señor. Te agradecemos porque tú nos pones just, juntas, Señor, y tú nos vas a dar sabiduría y nos vas a dar inteligencia, Señor, para poder entender y comprender, Señor, y hacer esto, Señor, parte, Señor, de nuestras vidas, Señor, que lo que aprendemos aquí, que de cada una, Señor, sea para beneficio de nuestras vidas espirituales. Te damos la gloria, te damos la honra, Señor. En el nombre de Cristo Jesús, te dejamos todo este mensaje. Y a los oidores que van a oírlo también, en el nombre de Cristo Jesús. Amén y amén. Amén y amén. Thank you so much. And as, if you, anybody, joins us on Saturday mornings, where we pray once a month. That is Teresita. She is one of our She Prays ambassadors. So thank you so much for praying us in and blessings to you. So you met Teresita. So let me introduce my other guests to you tonight. Um, we're going to be talking about the golden years. So I have asked to join me um, different age groups um, tonight. And I have Joanna, who will be representing the almost 40 age group. Hello, Joanna, and welcome tonight. Hello. And then I have Sierra, who will be representing the 20 year olds. Hello, Sierra. Hello. And then I'm jumping all around on ages. And then I have Leanne, who is uh, representing the 30 year olds. Hello, Leanne. Hello. And thank you for joining us. And then Teresita's got her age group. And then, drum roll, I got Roxanne. And I always think about the song, and I don't know if you remember it, Roxanne, but back in the day it was Roxanne, Roxanne. Dun, dun. <laughs> I'm dating myself. But um, so I have Roxanne here, and she is representing the wonderful age of 70 age group. And I'm so glad to have you with us. So hello, Roxanne, and thank you for joining me. Hello, thank you for having me. All righty. 
So we're going to jump in. You guys, they're nervous, so I just want you guys to know that they're nervous already. So to help you get the jitters out, we're going to talk about some some fun stuff before you get begin. I am the coffee lover, as you know, or I'm that confession of the coffee mug. How many of you drink coffee in the group? How many is drinking coffee? Who drinks coffee? Leanne drinks coffee. Joanna drinks coffee. Teresita drinks coffee. <clears throat> Roxanne ain't putting up her hand for no coffee. Roxanne is, is um, Roxanne probably looks, she could represent the 19-year-old group because she is the health woman, health specialist. So she didn't even put her hand up. You guys, we can't be drinking coffee no more. Okay, okay. Um, and Sierra, 20-year-old group, did not put her hands up for coffee. All righty. Huh, I don't know. And I'll be honest, I like coffee mugs. I, I put the coffee in the mug, and I might drink three times out of it, and I don't finish it. That's how coffee goes for me. All right, so now, here's another one, just to, so you guys can breathe, is uh, what can you think of your favorite worship song, a worship song that you heard recently that really spoke to your heart? Anybody can jump in and go. I can call on you if you wait too long. Go for it. Can you turn your volume up just a little bit, Roxanne? Can you hear me? Yes, ma'am. And you can turn it all the way up. It'll be great. Okay. Okay. I think it's all the way up. Okay. okay. Uh, one of my favorite worship songs is Give Myself Away. Mm. Yes, Give Love Myself that. Away. Yes. All righty. Joanna, what's your worship song? Yet. Mm. Um, I like the Maverick City version, but I also, this last week with, what was it, The King the king Will Come? Mm -hmm. I like that version too. Yes. All righty. Teresita? Oh, I like, um, I like the song you say um, with uh, Lauren... Di Di Dago. Lauren Dagle, yes. 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 Mm -hmm. Um, Leanne. Never by Tasha Layton. Okay. Never by Tasha Layton. All right, Sierra. Um, I like Good News by Maverick City Church. Yes. And I would say this week the song has been blessings, just that passing the generation so i like those songs that song as well the blessing which been around for a long time carrie job so the blessing all right so yes we they are here to join me in talking about the golden years and as i thought about getting this together in in thinking about the golden years change is an inevitable part of life and we're being shaped every minute of our lives and every thought, every decision, every action, every motion, every response is shaping us into the one kind of person or another. Either we're moving forward in the likeness of Christ or away from him into some sort of um, figure of a person God intended us to be. And as the world, we really don't think about that too much, that we're just kind of like um, growing into something we think that we might should be or how we think that God might have intended us to be. And there's a scripture that says, Psalm 71, uh, 71, 15. It's true, we lose some things as we age. Physical strength, quickness, um, agility, but think of the calm God gives us, the peace he lives with, leaves us the benefit of his salvation and his faithfulness um, to us and that's psalm 71 15 and then proverbs 16 31 says this old age is the best time to grow in grace and goodness and an inner strength and the beauty of character the silver hair head the wise man said is a crown of glory if it is it if it is found in a way of righteousness. So I want you to think about this for a minute and let's reflect on this one question, all right? 
when wrinkles and weakness come with age and life with the stresses take a toll, yet beauty can still be seen. So sister friends that you're joining me tonight, when you see wrinkles and maybe you're getting those wrinkles, what is the first thing that you think of? And um, do you think of them as something great that God has given you? Who wants to go first? I'm going to ask Sierra. Sierra, you have any wrinkles yet? 20-year-old <laughs> age bracket. <laughs> I don't have any wrinkles yet. I do have gray hairs. Mm -hmm. um, and I think I will use the gray hairs for the wrinkles, if mm -hmm. that's okay. Um, I actually... I'm okay with getting older and aging. I actually like getting older. I've noticed that my life has been a lot better the older I've gotten in regards to how I handle ups and downs and turbulences and also the blessings as well. So I think I'm actually enjoying getting older and the thought of getting older doesn't really make me as scared as it used to. Okay. All right, Leanne, do you have any wrinkles yet? I <laughs> I think I would say I don't think so just yet, but I do have gray hairs also, and I'm embracing it because I feel like I've come a long way from, you know, from the things that I've been through, okay. and it's, it's given me life, you know, like, I, I love that I'm growing and I'm maturing. All righty. Joanna, do you have gray hairs or any wrinkles yet? No wrinkles just yet. <laughs> <laughs> but I do have gray hair. I'm getting a skunk's tail, which I'm okay with it because you know what? Great. I, I am lucky enough that I am not fully gray because my dad is only 55 and he's a whole cotton head already. So I'm blessed and it is definitely a blessing to age. Because there's, I have had people in my life that have not made it to 37. Okay. And it's a blessing to age for sure. Okay. Teresita? I think I do have some wrinkles already. <laughs> um, white hair, yes, I do have a lot. Mm-hmm. Um, but it says in Proverbs 17, no, Proverbs 16, 31, silver hair is a beautiful crown found in a righteous life. Mm. So I'm okay with the, I'm trying to get it to grow out all the white hair. Mm -hmm. It gets a little hard, but, um, I think it gets to an age that you can have to admit your age. Mm -hmm. And um, I think as the more you grow and you get up in age, um, you get more knowledge mm -hmm. and um, and like um, Sierra was saying, um, you know, you think more of and of all the stuff that comes out to your life, you take it more easy and you think about it instead of just jumping in into the, a situation or anything like that like, mm -hmm. like us when you were young um so it's a blessing all righty roxanne i definitely have can you hear me yes now i can i do have some wrinkles I have some wrinkles, little, sometimes little crow's feet here by my eyes. I go, oh, look at that. Oh, okay. But you know what? It did bother me at first. I was like, wait a minute, what's going on? But the more I live and experience my life, I'm so grateful that I have really good health. And 
I'm, it's just a blessing to know that even with the wrinkles, they don't bother me because I know that I'm changing and I'm not just changing in my physicality, but I'm, I, my heart's changing. My walk with God is changing and everything is changing and it's so beautiful and it's so, um, I didn't even think about it like this. Every Everything is changing at one time. And so the more I with God and I'm, I'm, he's present with me every, he's always been present with me every day. Mm -hmm. When you're distracted or you've got your mind on other things, you don't realize that he's just that close to. And so I'm in a time in my life where I get it. And I'm grateful that I'm getting ready to be 71 next month. And I'm walking with God. He's walking with me. And so I don't, don't really bother me. I'm just feel blessed that I can get up every day and experience God in my life. And that's, I mean, if you would ask me that maybe even five years ago, I'd have been like, um, what cream do I need? What do I know? I'm going to do mm -hmm. Botox or anything like that. <laughs> right. What do I do? I'm not even about it because I'm in such a place of peace and comfort and realization. And this is, I mean, it's new. I mean, I was there at 40 or even 50. Right. But where I am right now, it, it's, it's all really a good place. And so it doesn't bother me. It's just part of the progression of my life and my purpose with God. It's, it's all good. Yes. Yes, ma'am. I remember when I started getting gray hair and I really had never colored my hair and it was, um, so the gray wasn't really even showing and my brothers had gray hair. My parents were both uh, gray headed and I just, it wasn't coming. And then when it just started coming, it just, came in like a wind. I was like, whoa, I wasn't ready for it. But now I just, I, you know, and, and I went all natural. So I just embrace it. And every day it gets beautiful and beautiful. I had to fall in love with it and me again. So I've embraced it where I am. Um, so yeah, it was, it was hard for a moment, but then I embraced it and then just falling in love with me and me getting older has been, um, really a good thing. So let me take you to the Bible. In Psalm 71, God actually talks about golden years and getting older. But in 71 is God's constant help. And in this passage, it tells you he helps us from birth to childhood to youth to old age to resurrection. And it says it, verse five says, O oh Lord, you alone are my hope. I've trusted you O oh Lord, from childhood, yes, you have been with me from birth. From my mother's womb, you have cared for me. No wonder I am always praising you. And when I think of the one where it says, from my mother's womb, you know, um, we don't really talk about it much, uh, or maybe it's spoken of more in the biblical sense that we all were a seed in our mother's womb when our grandmothers carried our mothers. And so God knew that we were gonna be here. And I just think like, what a privilege it is to know God and to serve him even on difficult days, that God knew that he was gonna bring us through. But if you had asked me when I was 20, no. Um, 30, uh, probably around 37 was really when I started having difficult days and where I called on the Lord more than I ever called on the Lord before. I'd gone through things and I, if you know that age, you kind of like manage your stuff and get it done. Okay, whew, I got by that by the hair of my chinny chin chin. But all of our lives are testimonies of what God has done. And as we age and we remember our lifetime, literally of blessings, it will help us see the consistency of God's grace throughout the years and to trust him for our future and share with others those benefits to follow him. So here is where I want to dive in a little bit. If you think about your life as a living testimony, 
Um, I'm going to go to Joanna right now. And Joanna, at the age of 20, you had been in church. You had gone to church most of your life. Um, did you ever think that your life was a testimony to the Lord at that time? No, no, because I was in my, um, I get to do what I want face. Okay. I've had restrictions my whole life. I, it was the religious part for me that was like, okay, let me rebel a little bit and see where it goes. Mm -hmm. So I definitely was not thinking about it at that moment in time as a testimony. Okay. And then I would tell you that Sierra grew up, um, kind of like you did in church. Um, probably not as strong as you did. Me and you probably have the same, we've talked about it, the same strongness of religion. Um, so Sierra is, will be 27 this year. And what could you say to her, um, in her journey right now where she is, where she grew up in church and learning that dynamic of who God is and, and how her life is a testimony. Well, first of all, <clears throat> I would have to say that not throw out everything out the window because don't throw it all out, but you're going to have to work on your relationship with God personally because nobody can put it there for you. And I had to learn that. <laughs> to be honest, three years ago, I learned that. I learned that it, it's a relationship, a personal relationship, kind of like any other relationship. If you want it to work, you're going to have to work at it. But don't discard what you've gone through your whole life up to this point, because you might not think it's useful and you might not think and see it oh, well, I've gone through this. How is that going to bef benefit anybody? But trust me, somebody will benefit from your story. Somebody will literally look at you and be like, how did you get through that? And it's all, it's all going to be to God's glory. You might not see it now, but then you look back and you're like, oh, okay, I get why you did that. And I understand now why I had to go through it. So even when times get hard and times get difficult, don't give up. Just keep going. And definitely God will do what he needs to do in his timing. Like it does not matter. To be honest, I always say this. I grew up in church and it, yes, the teachings were there. But it honestly, like it just kept me in a don't, kind of don't do this thing because it's bad kind of like rules for my life that's what they were they were basically rules until like i said maybe three years ago that i was like okay god i'm gonna work on this and i surrender it all to you because that's really and, and like i said that's god's timing so don't ever look at your your path as a well, why did I have to go through that? Or maybe God's not like, you know, 100% focusing on me right now or whatever the case may be, the doubts, the worries, all that. Like God knows what he's doing. And he knew from the minute before he even created the world what he was going to do with each one of us and that our path were, was supposed to glorify him anyways in his perfect timing. Mm -hmm. Amen. Thank you, Joanna. So uh, that brings me to this question. Um, when you were, we're going to go back, we'll use 20. 20 is our point. When you were 20, Roxanne, just leaving your mom's house, mom and dad's house, getting ready to live your life, what did you think you were going to be when you grew up? What, were your, what was your heart set on? I didn't have a clue. I had no clue. I it, I gave no thought. Um, I was 18. And um, I had my daughter in 72. Got high school in 71. Got married in 72. Um, and had my daughter 
in 74 and the husband died in 75. Hmm. So um, this is my high school sweetheart that I married. I, I just was all over the place, to be honest. I didn't have a clue. I grew up, I you know, went to Catholic school through eighth grade. And I, I wasn't really familiar with like relationship or anything like that. So I had no ideas about God, except if I needed to go to confession or it didn't, there was, there was no connection in terms of relationship. Okay. Um, I knew I liked being in the church, but I just didn't have a clue to mm-hmm. be really honest. No clue. So I have this question. How were you and your first husband passed away? You know, it was really odd. I, I, I did okay. I mean, I, I feel like I did okay in retrospect. Um, I had my daughter and I, I was okay. Because mm-hmm. you were fairly young. And when I, I was very young. I got married at 19 and my daughter at I don't remember how old I was. I think it was she was born. But then I married again and lost that husband. So I had my, had been widowed twice. I had two children. And really when my second husband passed away, that is when I started just really finding out. And I was going to, I was in church and I was, my sister-in-law, my ex-sister-in-law had ministered to my um my second husband, you know, to share with him about salvation and God. And I had came home one day and was so happy because he had received, he had cancer. He was so happy. And, and what I had, what thought was in my mind, well, I had to go to church all this time for a couple of years, his two young kids and he never went. And I felt really convicted when I went and I was talking to him and he was elated that he had signed his name of Christ. And he said, Sandra came by here. I said, Sandra? So she, I didn't even talk to him about the Lord because I knew he didn't want to hear it. Mm. But when I went to work, he came over and spoke to him about God. And I could just, he's laying in the bed and he is, you could just, on joy and I've wept because I felt so convicted mm. why didn't I talk to him about the Lord my ex-sister-in-law had to do it and so then my life began to shift I began to really seek God and just try I was trying to make up for that because I, I said here's somebody I, I thought knew the Lord but somebody who I never thought would come and minister to my husband came And that was, I think, the first time I saw how instrumental God is in our lives. Because that was God. Yes. And wow, what a story. I mean, you were widowed two times. What a story. Uh, Roxanne, because you keep going in and out, will you do me a favor? Will you pop out and come back in to see if your chain, just go all the way back out, log out, and come back in, okay? Okay. Um, Teresita, when you were 20 years old, what did you want to be when you grew up? What did you think you were going to be? Well, when I was 20 years old, <laughs> I already had a daughter. Okay. And I was a mom when I just turned 18. Mm. And it was a little bit hard because... My parents uh, moved away. I was with my husband and my husband's family, which they adopted me like their daughter and which I am thankful for it. Um, And I always, um, I thought it was, you know, that was my job, being a mom. And when my husband's aunt, she just passed away, she started going to church. Um, I have been in church because my mom used to go to church when I was small, but I wasn't all into it. Um, I was just going to church because I was just going to church. 
And but when I um, started going to church for reals, like that I needed God, <laughs> that I thought, you know, okay, this is, I'm an adult already and I have to make my own decisions. And what better way to be is to be, you know, following God's, you know, path. Um, it wasn't easy. Um, but I wasn't like really into fully. Um, I think until after when I had my third daughter, which when I was 24 years old, okay. um, a lot of stuff, um, started happening in my life mm -hmm. and, um, I just seek God because I knew that that was the only way that I was going to be able to go through what I was going through and, um, that he gave me the strength for it. And I'm thankful that I found him and I was able to, I think I found a, from him, everything that I needed, my confidence, um, because that was the one that I always used to go through to every time that I was, you know, that I had a problem mm -hmm. when my kids were sick, when um, something was going on in my relationship. And I think I, I just kind of rely on him and I start seeking more and more of mm -hmm. him. And that's when I just realized that without God, and I think now that I'm old, it's like, you know, even though when you're young, you come, you, you think, okay, you know, this is, this is not for me because I'm still young. I still want to do this. And the other ones are doing this and that. So I want to do that too. Mm -hmm. I didn't have the privilege to do all this stuff in a way. I, and, but, and at that time I thought, well, you know, I'm missing all this because I'm being a mom, you know, but now that I'm old, I thank God that I never did anything of that stuff <laughs> because I uh, like, I'm so thankful that I, you know, I have my kids and I was like more focused on that and that I had mm -hmm. to be a mom and I had to be there 24 seven for them mm -hmm. than to be clubbing and partying and doing things that I wasn't supposed to be doing anyways. Right. Right. <laughs> but, um, but yes, that was my, I don't, I don't think that I ever thought about, Oh, you know, am I going to be doing something else when I was 20, I would just focus on being a mom. Mm -hmm. And thank you for sharing. And you know, um, you made me think of that. We're all set apart, um, with our stories. They're all different, but we're all set apart. And probably somewhere in our life, we all wanted to be like them over there, but there was something different about all of us that we didn't, um, he didn't allow us to just jump in and lose our minds because we're still here. And I think that's the beauty of it because I know a lot of your stories and that is the beauty of it that God never took his hands off of our lives. And sometimes we don't understand why we don't see things or do things the way that the world do them or fully jump into it. We're set apart. And so I'm going to ask this. This is a more of a golden age question, but it's this right here. In God's economy, no one is made um, um, to feel old or, consider, or considered to be old. He says in Psalms 92, 14, they shall bring forth, bring forth fruit in their old age. So let me give you an example of just what's in the Bible. Abraham believed God, and by faith he had a child, a hundred years old. You can believe God and exercise that same faith. Caleb, at 80 years old, was still claiming the promises of God. We get to claim those same praises. Um, Daniel was a man of prayer into his old life, over 80 years old, 
in the lion's den and he prayed and this was probably the most powerful thing that we can do in our old age so we saw in the bible and we've learned in the bible a lot of them were up in age okay so let's think about it for a minute we were up in age they were up in age so do you look at your life and this is almost a yes or a no question i think but when you when you think about yourself do you say you're old because most if you think about most of the ministries and the calling those people were old 180 and they're still going and are you thinking about when i get 55 i'm sitting down when i get 60 i'm not doing nothing when i get 70 girl i'm in the house with it but this is when it got started and you think now like right now at our age i'm i'm 56 at my age i'm just like okay let me <clears throat> let me get comfortable in this chair but it's just getting started and i can honestly tell you it's i'm not comfortable in this chair because god gave me girl talk it is god's ministry but it has me on fire like i've never been on fire before i don't know when it'll end i don't want it to end right at this day i don't want it to end because every day is exciting and every day is new so i feel like okay i'm abraham shoot i'm birthing some stuff i might be a hundred but i'm birthing some in ministry okay shoot i'm daniel and he told me start the she praise ambassadors like okay i'm going for it so my question back to you and if you think about your grandparents what do you see as old and did you really think about the ages of the people in the bible and the call that he had on their life that he started ministry when they had gone through a lot of stuff and that's where it began all right i'm gonna start with leanne on this one so leanne do you think of yourself as old i don't think of myself as old but i do i i know i always say that i'm wise beyond my years like mm -hmm. <laughs> that you know and i still think like every day i'm thankful to god when i wake up that if i wake up i'm given a new opportunity i'm if i'm i've changed my mindset i'm able with walking with god i'm able to do this i am you know i can do these things instead of looking at it as a chore or you know i i can do it and and that has well, while walking with God, that has really helped me, you know, go about my days because I am a stay at home mom. And I mean, prior to walking with God, I wanted to be an attorney for women and children. Can I still do it? Yes, I can. But right now, my ministry is motherhood. And that's what I'm walking in. Okay. So would you be open to if he knocked on your door at 50 years old and he's like, all right, it's time for you to go do that, being an attorney for mothers and kids, you ready? I believe, I, I, I mean, I, all of the time I'm still looking, you know, mm -hmm. I still have that, I feel like I still have that passion. Mm -hmm. Like when I did go back to school for my master's, uh, it's going on two years now, you know, I, I didn't know how I was going to do it because I had been out of school. Mm -hmm. but he gave me the strength. My mm -hmm. sister and her family lived with me. So that was a total of nine people in the home and I was doing it all online. Mm -hmm. I was, you know, but I didn't do it in my own strength. I did it in his strength. Mm -hmm. And every time I thought that I wanted to give up, there's no, no, he, he put this, he put me in my purpose. Like this is for me. So let's go a little bit deeper because I, I get where you're coming from where you went to school and you thought you were on this path, right? And you you thought you were going to be working in the legal area with mothers and children. So you're on this path and you think that you're going to fill out some applications and boom, you're going to have a job. Like that's where your heart, and I've been there. Like I went to school and oh, I'm ready to do this and now it's been two years and what is your thoughts and how you feel in there because we all i think we all think that we are in control of our plans but god has the ultimate plan i 
when putting applications and um, I know that if that's not in my will, like I've, t- I've tried to go towards things that are not just in that general area. If you know, that means in another direction for my will, then, then that is what I'm open to doing that. And I know it's not, if, if it's not meant for me, the door is not going to open. Mm-hmm. It's not, it's not going to be possible. So, um, as far as when I did go back to, to school, I didn't, um, I chose a different subject. I did it in forensic psychology. Mm-hmm. So prior to that was a pre-law and, you know, criminal justice. But this time when I went back to school was in forensic psychology and, uh, behavioral Mm-hmm. And so how has it been for you waiting in this season? Cause you're waiting and how has that, um, feel like, you know, sometimes you can feel like, you know what, I did this and it's not what I thought it was going to be. So how has the waiting been for you? Growing. I'm, I feel like I'm still being pruned. Like I'm still, in my waiting season, but this is not the only time, you know, there's been many times that I've been in, in a waiting season and he showed me that he will move mountains when it's time in his Mm -hmm. time. It's not in my time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that's true. It's not in our time. Cause if you look at Abraham's time, (laughs) Abraham was a hundred when he's having children. That was a promise that God had made to him for um, years and years before that time. And it is, it is um, understanding that uh, we're in God's time and God has something amazing planned for our lives all the time, up until our golden years, up until the time that we go home. Um, I wanted to share this part. Um, when you think about yourselves, there is another generation coming. There always is, and they must be taught about the strength and the faithfulness of the Lord. What do you think you fall in that to understand that there is always a generation coming and we're in a different season in our life. We, we move differently than I've ever experienced. Um, but what do you think about there's another generation coming and there always is, and we must be taught, um, and they must be taught about the strength and the righteousness and the faithfulness of God. Where do you see yourself in, um, that, and I'm asked that to Sierra and, and I want you to be honest about this question. Where do you see yourself in that knowing that there's another generation coming behind you? And you have to turn your mic, okay? (laughs) I'm trying to understand your question. Okay. So there is a generation behind you. Mm -hmm. um, And they um, need to know about the world today. Mm -hmm. And God has positioned you Mm -hmm. to be a VIP is what, what I would call it. Vision, integrity, and purpose. God has given you a vision integrity and a purpose and in that you are a influential person it didn't just start now we've always had this influence on others Mm -hmm. and how do you see yourself being a person for the next generation that's coming behind you for the 10 let's say 10 to 19 year olds well I guess I could use Parker. He's still considered my generation, but he's pretty much the next generation. Mm-hmm. Um, I think it would be, it would probably be mentorship. Mm-hmm. I, I know that I'm the eldest of Gen Z, so it would be more like me telling him. And we're trying to have that more of a relationship now where we can talk about things and he feels comfortable asking more questions. But I think the biggest thing is making sure that I'm open to answering questions or that he feels comfortable asking me questions. I think that's, I don't know about you guys, but I think that's something that we've all struggled with growing up is asking older people questions. 
mm-hmm. and getting advice and getting help. We have it. We all have a tendency, especially you know in the teens and young twenties, to be hard headed and not want to ask. So I know that. So I, I tell Parker like, hey, you can come to me for anything. I've told some of the younger kids when I went to church more that I'm here if you need to ask me anything. I'm not your parent, so I'm not going to judge you right off the bat or you feel that guilt because I've done dumb things too when I was younger. And I think it's important that we be, you know, good mentors for them and be a good like guiding hand for them because you know they're going to make the same mistakes. Different mistakes, yes, but the same theme Mm -hmm. of, you know, just not asking any questions. I mean, even I see that with Chance. A lot of the stuff that he does is stuff that, you know, I didn't do the exact same thing, but I didn't ask questions in my 20s that I should have. So I think, I hope I'm answering your question. Mm -hmm. I think the um, the most important is just being a guiding hand for the younger generations Mm -hmm. and not being judgmental. Mm -hmm. We all make mistakes. And I... Mm -hmm. Did you realize that you are important for the next generation or you thought you were non-existent? Oh, (laughs) I think I'm important as like the eldest sibling. I I definitely think I am important. I do know that my brothers watch me whether I like it or not. And I definitely didn't realize how much Parker watched us until I started hanging out with him more. And I realized that he is a sponge for the good and the bad. So it's important that, you know, I make sure that I'm, and I'll be interacting with him, but I'm showing him good things as well. Okay. Thank you. Um, Joanna, um, did you realize that you are a VIP for the Lord and that he is using you for the next generation? If you would have asked me that three years ago, I knew they were looking at me, but in paying attention, but did I care? No. <laughs> now it's completely different. Mm-hmm. Um, because I've seen that every generation has something to bring. Mm-hmm. Um, I was actually reading Psalms 90 one and one, it says, Lord, you have been our refuge in every generation and joining girl talk ministry. It, it definitely has opened my eyes to that even more. I was blessed to have my great aunt, you know, constantly pushing and saying, look, God is good, you know, and my grandmother and my mother. And then I joined Girl Talk and I'm like, wow. Wow. This is a generational blessing because you don't just learn from the older generations. I learned that just like I learned from you, you guys learn from me. And in God doesn't despise you for your age. He uses you at all ages. And I've witnessed that with my youngest son because he, he throws me off sometimes, you know, inviting his teacher to join Girl Talk. That had to be on a whole brave level because I'm like, I would have never even thought of inviting somebody to church or any type of ministry at his age. And then I see um, Sierra and I see Leanne and, you know, how God is moving in their lives. So at every generation, you definitely set the example and you definitely set the tone. So now say with that, well, saying that, I definitely know that the next generation is looking up, Mm -hmm. but just like the next generation is looking up to us, the generation that came before me can also learn something from me. So I definitely see it different now. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Teresita. When did you realize, even having girls, you had girls young, and you have three girls and and two boys, but outside of your girls and your sons, when did you realize that you had other peers or other sister friends who who were watching your walk and that it was important? 
Um, I want to say when I was at church in San Diego, um, I was uh, active a lot in there, but a lot of, of the youth kids, that was one of my ministries that I had in there. And a lot of them, uh, besides my kids, um, I don't know. I, I think it was God that um, attracted me to them at the same time. It was my in that time. Um, but a lot of youth of the church, we used to um, teach them. And um, and also some older ladies that um, we were in the um, ministry, the ladies ministry also. Um, we were together in there, we made things together, but, but you learn to watch yourself, uh, and be, try to be an example all the time for them, because yes, like Sierra said, it, it's not only the kids that they're like sponges because they're also the older people and uh, the people there, they, they look at you, what you do. Um, your example for, and your testimony that it's, it, you don't need to say anything just for that way. You, you don't need to say anything, but your testimony, it talks a lot. Mm -hmm. And it's not only for, it doesn't really have to be just for, um, your same, uh, type, um, gender like the same uh woman or guys because i used to work with this guy and he i used to tell him hey used to work could i use the um could i put uh caleb and he said oh yeah that's fine and um he never i don't know if he ever heard somebody talk to him about god or anything but by me listening to Caleb and and listening to the 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 gospel music and everything in there at work, it was kind of it was nice because it helped me. But at the same time, there was one time that he told me, you know, and he and he told me that he goes, Teresa, you're gonna go to heaven even with shoes. And I was like, <laughs> you know, <laughs> and I, I love you because I was like, no, I'm not. I'm not. I go, and then she go, and <laughs> but seeing them and them, then seeing you, the testimony that you give to them, like all around the people that used to always work, they never like they people that don't follow Christ, but because I'm there and they see that I don't do the same thing that they do, they respect me. Mm -hmm. And I see that I, I think that everybody should also be the same way as, as give the testimony mm -hmm. and it attracts you with all different kinds of ages. Mm -hmm. I mean, you have to, because it can be kids, they can be adults and it can be, all the people that sometimes they never knew God, but just seeing you, um, you know, and I'm not saying I'm perfect because I'm not, I make a lot of mistakes. Um, but I try my best. Mm -hmm. And I think the, the, I don't say that I, I would not say I just started now, or I just started before when I was in my probably 25 mm -hmm. years that I started deep, you know, going into church and all that stuff. Um, but I said that since then I had tried, tried, um, watching my steps, okay. whatever I go. Okay. Thank you for sharing. Thank you all for being very <laughs> honest and vulnerable there. Um, we've been recording for a while. So I want to ask a couple of fun questions and then I'll, I'll say something else at the end, but this is, um, one of the questions and, um, and I had sent these out to you um, to answer. And what's your favorite thing about yourself? And as, as I am growing older, there's something about 
loving who you are and not trying to fit in. And it takes us some years, um, some centuries to understand, to, to love yourself and who God has created you to be. Because that moment that light bulb comes on that, this is me. This is who I am. You know, I have some things about me, some quirks, but what is that? What's your favorite thing about yourself? And if you will start, Roxanne, will you start? And I'll make it this way. Give me one word. That's all I want. One word. What's your favorite thing about you? Everybody laugh. I'm fun. Okay, fun. Awesome. Uh, Leanne, what's that one thing about you that you love? Big heart. Big heart. Um, Joanna, what's that one thing you like about you? My smile. Okay. Teresita, that one thing you like about you? I'm not shy anymore. All righty. And uh, Sierra, what's that one thing you like about you? I'm a really good listener. Okay. Um, the one thing I like about me is that I am funny. I have a funny side. Um, okay, let me give you another one. Um, this is yes or no, so I'll make it very easy for you. Very easy, yes or no. And whatever you say is totally fine. We're going to go on with it because it's really where you are in your life. Um, do you believe in second chances, Sierra? Of course. Okay. Of course I do. All right. Roxanne? Yes. Teresita? Definitely yes. Leanne? Yes. Um, Joanna? A hundred times yes. And myself, yes. Now, let me go back, because I know you all gave me the right political answer. <laughs> so, did you have to, this is yes or no too, did you have to go through something to understand second chances? Sierra? Yes. Okay. Roxanne? Yes, indeed. Leanne? Yes. Teresita? Yes. Joanna? Yes. And for me, yes. Okay, one more question on second chances. It's yes or no. Was that second chance that you have to even, was that given a second chance or believing in second chances have to do with you giving yourself a second chance yes or no sierra yes roxanne yes teresita yes leanne yes um joanna yes and yes Look at that. We are really just all alike and didn't even know that we're alike. <laughs> yes. Um, one last question, and we, this is going to hit relationship. Do the people, is it important who you surround yourself with? And tell me about what age did you learn this at? Roxanne. Have you, is it important who you surround yourself with and what age do you feel like you really, that click for you, that that was important for your life? Uh, yes, it's important. And early on, it was important to me, um, just to be in harmony with my environment. Mm -hmm. So I don't hang around if it's not good. But since I'm older, I'm real adamant about it. Yeah. That the, my circle, my the people that I'm around, 
you know, we encourage each other, we pray for one another, because I've been toler I've been toler I've tolerated some stuff that I shouldn't have tolerated. Mm -hmm. But still kind of picky about, well, I, I don't want to do anything that's negative or do toxic, or I would say that, but I would be a little bit surrounded with that. But now since I'm 70, I I, I don't ever say I'm old, but I will say uh, today I have my senior card in my hand and that's not working for me today. So bye-bye. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> I got my senior card, man, and that is not working for me. All righty. Leanne, for you, um, do you believe in who you have surrounding you? And when did that light bulb come on for you that um, that's important for your life? Yes, I think it does make a difference. And I for most of my growing up, because I always had my mom always, you know, there to tell me on my shoulder, like, you know, who you're surrounding yourself with. But I think as I got older and a living life, becoming a mom, I think I'm much more careful. Like I choose my surroundings with care okay. and who I actually want to be with. Like I'd rather be alone than you know, be with somebody that's not good for me or my family. Mm -hmm. So. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. I'm going to switch up the question now just to give us variety. Um, Sierra, what is the last book that you read that in listening to the ladies talk tonight that you would say, ladies would go grab this book. it would be a good book for you to read. I'd like to pass. <laughs> yes, we got to pass. I like that. So pass. So none of the books that you've read lately, you would advise any of them to read? Okay. All right. So Joanna, your turn. And what would you say to Sierra now? Because you are generation, you're a little bit higher than her. What would you say to her at her age, knowing that you probably read the same books that she read? <laughs> I'm, I'm laughing just because I probably would read some of Sierra's books still today and be like, oh, this was totally good. But <laughs> <laughs> like this. Um, oh my goodness. I'm trying to remember. We just finished reading this a few months ago. Oh my goodness. Though we stumble. Though we stumble, yes, such an amazing book. Like had me all over the place, like crying and relatable, and just <coughs> definitely a book that I would definitely recommend to people of all ages because it's not just it doesn't just hit women of middle age. It doesn't mm -hmm. just hit it, like it starts off young, and. I thought that it was in such an incredible book because you don't personally, I've read Christian books and they don't, um, yes, it's, it's, um, life giving in the sense of you learn, but though I stumbled was so relatable that I was just like, wow, yeah, it, it was great for me. Mm -hmm. So Definitely, though I stumble. All right. So I, I brought books that I recommend, but I wouldn't recommend this particular book to you guys because you guys are older than 20. But the Defining Decade book, I did tell you about that one. That one was pretty good. Oh, it has a bad glare. Okay. But um, it's about why your 20s matter and how to make the most out of them. Mm -hmm. And then I don't know if you guys have read Lessons in Chemistry. It's a really good book. I definitely recommend it. It's not Christian at all, it's secular. It's about a woman in the 1950s who is a scientist and she's a single mom. And it's a really good book. I really enjoyed it. It's very tame. Um, so nothing like weird happens, but it's a cute book. I definitely recommend. All right. So, yes, you had some books that you'd recommend. Yes, but I didn't know if they needed to be like, you know, religious books. No, like, they don't. We don't all just always read religious books. <laughs> like, okay. 
We like fun too sometimes, okay? Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, yes, lessons in chemistry is very good. I recommend it. All right. Ladies, I, I want to thank you. And then I have another question to ask you. Um, and it's this that um, we have, we literally have been recording for an hour. I don't know if you've noticed that, but time goes by very fast. And I do, I want to thank you, but I want to ask you this. Will you record another, one more episode to this to finish it next week so we can listen to it next week? Will you do it one more time with me? Okay. All right. So as I, yes. thank you, thank you, thank you. Is it the same time? Uh, we'll, we'll talk about that afterwards. Okay. Okay, cool. Thank you. Um, so as we finish up tonight, I wanted to share this part. Um, remember for each one of you, and this is just a word of encouragement as we end that there is another generation, uh, coming and there always will be. And I say this to you that know that you are very important to the Lord and your life is important to him. And he's created you for something absolutely amazing as your purpose. And you have an area of influence. Uh, from which God has assigned you to, and he's waiting to use you because you are his VIP. And VIP stands for you have a vision. God has given you a vision in your heart. It's your integrity and your, pur in your, and your purpose. He gives us just enough information to help us move forward one step at a time, no matter what age you are. And as we take this process on with, the, with God, it's God's purpose and his plan for our lives. He will reveal more information to you one step at a time as you move ahead. And so we have to keep this open dialogue with the Lord and know that God has an amazing purpose for our lives. And we have to pay attention to the road and the signs on the road that he provides along the way and listen to him speak to you. What he's given you will be different from what he's given me, Roxanne, Leanne, Sierra, Teresita, Joanna. It'll be all different. But God will speak to you, and he will use his words to speak to you. He'll use situations. He'll use people. He'll use the Holy Spirit. And then you can be confident that he will show you when you are ready to move forward. And so remember, there's always another generation. And you've seen it so much but remember this part of it you have seen so much in the hands of god in your life god is always working he has so many amazing stories of his mighty miracles that's happened in your life there for the next um you have enjoyed the goodness of the lord god is going to keep on and keep on because the god we serve is abundant and so every day is a new day of opportunities and possibilities and that's how he wants you to look at every day don't look at it the same like today is and and i share this all the time today is february the 19th 2024 you have never seen this day so sister friends don't treat this day as the same as last year february the 19th 2023 because it's not god had this day for us to enjoy it and it's full of possibilities open those possibilities up because God's going to use you with those possibilities. And understand this, you have a deeper, as you grow with the Lord, no matter where you are in your life, you'll have a deeper understanding of God's character. Every day, that's the beauty of it. You'll see God's character as you are developing. You'll see how good God is. And then we need, we need you. You are valuable. And we want you to know how important you are to us. So we didn't just come on here to start this. God knew who needed to be here because he lined each one of you up to be here tonight. And remember that, that we are important to each other just as well. So don't let this time just drop off. Remember, we've never seen this day. We've never seen this hour. We didn't know we had this connection. But God knew this very day we'd be sitting here doing a podcast. So I just want to thank you all for joining me. Thank you for um, uh, being open to this. And Joanne, if you'll do me a favor, you'll posture your heart to get ready to pray us out. So I thank you. And um, I want to tell all the listeners out there, thank you for joining us. Come back. We may add on. 
God may drop off depending on schedules and life, but come back and join us as we continue to talk about golden ages, golden age, and what life is there to bring. It hasn't stopped just because of our age. Joanna, it is all yours, and thank you for praying us out. Thank you for having us. All right. Um, Dear Heavenly Father, I just thank you for the opportunity of getting together and just glorifying you tonight, Father God. I thank you for showing us that it does our ages don't matter, that it can all be used to glorify you, that you had already predestined us and each of us has a gift that brings something to the table, Father God. And that is what we're all about, being at the table with you, Father God. So I thank you for each of my sister friends tonight, Father God, and each of their stories, Father God. It's a beautiful story. We all have our own path with you, Father God. And we just continue to go on trusting you, Father God, because we know you've been with us from the start, even before you put us in our mother's womb, Father God. You already knew what was going to happen to us and what we were going to go through. But we also, you also knew you were going to get us through it. So we continue, Father God, to trust in you and believe in you, Father God. You meet us at the mountaintop, but you meet us in the valleys too, Father God. So we thank you for what you've done, for what you're doing, and for what you're going to do, Father God. Let the glory be to you, Father God. We love you and we praise you. In your precious name I pray. Amen. Amen. And thank you, sister friends, for joining in. And we'll see you right back here next week on A Cup of Soul. Mark your calendars because Cup of Soul drops on Tuesday, every Tuesday morning. So we'll see you next week. Blessings. Bye. 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 Bye.